I'm here on Tagagi Beach, which is on the north coast of the island, the Greek island of Kos, in the Aegean, uh, which of course is part of the Mediterranean Sea. And the beach itself, as you can see, is quite sandy. Um, but it has a very limited uh, swash, the waves are quite small, and the fetch direction is, from, at the moment, from the west. Now, the swash comes up this very narrow uh, beach face, which you can see here, the swash waves coming up to this uh, rise, and this rise, of course, is called the berm. And the berm, at this point, is covered with seaweed, which runs along the top of the beach. Now, behind the berm, we have a quite extensive area of backshore, where we have this flat, um, it's relatively seaward sloping here, or, or horizontal, um, uh, uh, component to the beach, uh, beach morphology. Now, as we go to the back of the beach, you can see that we are, uh, we've got the road just directly behind the beach here cars parked on it and it is quite a busy little road but as we look um, up the beach you can see that there are a line of trees planted to help secure the back of the beach in place and to fix it now within the last few years there's been a survey undertaken of the beaches along northern Kos particularly here at Tagaki and also uh, further to the east at a place called Lamy uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm, why I'm, why I'm that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Now, the survey itself uh, did a number of erosion um, surveys along the beach in the last, uh, uh, over the last, uh, between 2003 and 2004. And they found that the beach was retreating during that point. But, it, but looking back further at the island's history, um, between the First and Second World War, COS was um, governed by, the, by Italy and the Italian surveyors um, mapped the coastline back in 1930. And so Greek uh, geographers were able to uh, compare the 1930s shoreline with that of 2003-2004. Now what they found was that over the last uh, 80 years or so that the coastline of the northern beaches of Kos has retreated quite substantially. Um, on the order of about uh, 25 centimeters per year, and so it's retreated back. Now, you wouldn't think that looking at the sandy beach here, um, but as we walk further down, you can see that there are indications of erosion. Now, the, the reason for the overall retreat over the several kilometers of coastline has been put down to uh, increased storminess and global warming and, the, uh, and so on, and rising sea levels, but superimposed on that, you have subtler changes. But before we look at those subtler changes, um, we can have a look at some sort of indicators of coastal positioning um, through time. The Italian survey was undertaken in 1930. Of course, after that, we had the Second World War. Just in the distance over there, you might be able to see um, a German gun emplacement, which was, of course was built during the Second World War. Now, at the moment, it's right there on top of the cliffs, and it's likely that when that was built, that there was a, a more extensive beach in front of it, which it had watch over. So we can probably use that as an indicator to suggest that the beach has, is now retreating back, and indeed, the coastal erosion is threatening the, um, the gun emplacement itself. And if they want to keep it, perhaps as a, as a historic monument, then um, coastal erosion uh, protection measures need to be put in place. Now, the reason why, of course, you've got so much erosion with taking place uh, over there by the gunning placement is because of this feature which is just in front of us. Now this is a little jetty and you can see that they use this ramp here to, to launch boats off into the sea. But of course this jetty is acting as a groin. Now up drift of this groin of course, if we turn around, you can see that this groin is trapping sand and keeping the beach in place for tourists to use. But east of the groin, um, the, the sand isn't coming down drift, and so it's becoming starved of sand. 
And so the longshore drift direction here is to the east, and this groin, this jetty, is sticking out into that, interrupting that longshore drift system. So the sand is being trapped to the west of it, updrift, but downdrift it's being, it's being starved. Let's have a look. Now as we come down drift, we can see a number of things. This is one of the trees that continues in the line that we saw on the, on the main beach uh, to the west. Uh, and that's just about still in got its roots in sand. But as we come down here, you might be able to see that the line of trees, the same line of trees that were planted in the beach, um, are now actually in the sea. And their roots are exposed. We look here, we can see that the tree is being undermined by the wave erosion um, and it's actually now part of the beach. And these rocks that you might be able to see behind the trees now have been put in place by the coastal engineers to try and stop the beach eroding further. And of course the reason for that is that on top of that small cliff is the coastal road. And of course they want to protect that from erosion because that's a main line of tourist communication along the different resorts here in northern Coz. So, a very important um, uh, structure, this rock revetment that's been put here to uh, prevent the road being eroded further. If we go up, we might be able to see some examples of coastal erosion uh, going on in terms of the road. You can see all the tourist development behind it. But we only have to walk a little way before we start to see uh, the road having to be repaired by concrete. Um, we can see an example just here. I'll just walk past this car. Well, hopefully you can see that the concrete has had to be laid at, this, at the margin of the road here. And further on, just before those bicycles coming up, you can see a dark patch of tarmac where it had to be uh, re resurfaced. And you can see right along here the coastal erosion is taking away the beach, it's undermining the, the roots of the trees that have been planted as coastal protection measures in the past. So since those have been planted, the, that sand has been stripped away. And that goes right on. In fact, that, this ero se section of erosion carries on all the way until there's another groin, another jetty that sticks out into the beach halfway between Tagaki and Lamy that again acts as a groin and starts to trap sediment that's drifting um, to the east uh, and so the beach does recover slightly further on but of course beyond that groin then the uh, erosion starts again so it's a bit cyclical. So on top of the overall long-term erosion that has been demonstrated here and published for this coastline of about 25 centimeters a year within that we have more subtle erosion going on due to more local factors such as the building of jetties um, along the coastline that act as groins interrupting the longshore drift system and meaning that the coastal engineers here in Greece are having to um, protect these important communication routes such as this road that connect up the, the tourist industry along the coastline which of course is vital for their economy.